Well, a man who's become incredibly well known around the world because of the coronavirus has died. This is the Chinese doctor who tried to warn the medical community about the coronavirus. He was told to be quiet by the authorities before weeks later being diagnosed with the virus himself. Here we can see BBC Chinese reporting on this, saying Dr. Lee was declared dead initially at half past ten, uh, nine local time on February the 6th, and that was reported by state media, but it got more complicated. Initially, there was a huge reaction on Chinese social media to this news, and then journalists and doctors at the scene who did not want their names used told the BBC that government officials then decided to control the flow of information by ordering the doctor to be put back on life support despite the fact he was dead, and to change official media reports from death to in critical condition. Well, that attempt to shut down the story has failed, and official Chinese media is now reporting the death of Dr. Li. And the background to this is that Dr. Li posted a warning on a group chat of medics in December. He said he'd seen seven cases that he thought resembled the SARS virus that led to a global epidemic in 2003. Chinese police then accused him of making false statements, of severely disturbing the social order. He was then forced to sign a document in which the authorities said, we solemnly warn you, if you keep being stubborn with such impertinence and continue this illegal activity, you will be brought to justice. Is that understood? And underneath that, Dr. Lee had written, yes, I do. Even in January, officials in Wuhan, where the virus began, was insisting that only those who, in contact, who came in contact with infected animals could catch the virus. That wasn't true, and no accurate guidance was issued to protect doctors who'd been in contact with infected people. Then we were told Dr. Lee had fallen ill, and finally, on the 20th of January, China did declare an emergency connected to the virus go on to the end of January, and Dr. Lee posted this picture with the words, finally diagnosed. He confirmed he had the virus. Well, the pictures of Dr. Lee in his hospital bed are going to become among the defining images of this crisis, despite China's efforts to manage this story. Isabel Hilton is from China Dialogue. This is what China does, China increasingly seeking to control what, what people know. And that was the problem in the beginning. You know, if Dr. Lee had been listened to in the beginning, if the authorities had acted in the beginning, we wouldn't have seen this virus escape from Wuhan all over China and then internationally. And now, you know, however draconian the measures taken, you know, this is essentially shutting the stable doors. So people like Dr. Lee, who were sanctioned, I mean, having been interviewed by the police, they had to confess to spreading rumors, which, is, which can carry a five-year sentence in China. Um, you know, this, is, this means that, that, that what the, the government is most afraid of is information that is inconvenient. Well, Dr. Lee's death has generated an outpouring of anger on social media. The BBC's Stephanie Hegarty has been looking at it. There is anger at the confusion all around this virus, not just about his story and what's happened to him, but that uh, certain things may have been suppressed, that he was criticised for just doing his job, asking his... The message he sent to his colleagues was telling them to be safe, to wear protective clothing, mm -hmm. and I think there was anger that he is, was reprimanded just for being a good, sensible doctor. Another thing I found striking following the story today is that a lot of the reports we've had from Chinese authorities have been that the people dying from this virus have been elderly people or people with respiratory problems. And here we have a man who, a middle-aged man, apparently in very good health before this virus, um, seemingly losing his life. And that kind of jolts you to the, the real risks that come with this virus. Yeah, he was in his early to mid-30s, it seems. So, uh, and by all accounts, though we don't know, he didn't share that much about his health before. Uh, he got sick, uh, it seems that he was a healthy guy. So I guess that is what is worrying people as well. And we can only go by what Chinese authorities are telling us about who is dying from this virus. And I think that the death of someone so high profile and seemingly so young is definitely creating fear. Well, while Chinese people mourn Dr. Lee, the virus continues to spread. There are now over 28,000 confirmed cases worldwide. 99% of those are in China and 564 deaths have been confirmed. The World Health Organization is also telling us the virus is in these 24 countries around the world. The biggest number of cases outside of China currently are in Japan with 45 and also Singapore with 28. 
Another country which the virus has reached is the UK. A third case is being diagnosed. Here's the BBC's health editor, Hugh Pym. A man, middle-aged, we're told, in Brighton in the south of England, uh, became unwell. He'd recently returned from Singapore. We don't know his nationality. Uh, he was isolated at home, tested positive with a new strain of coronavirus and was taken to a hospital in London, St Thomas's, part of the Guys and St Thomas's Trust, which has specialist isolation units for looking after people with in infectious diseases, similar to the unit in Newcastle, which is caring for two patients already diagnosed. And with this diagnosis, does it change the broader advice the UK is offering? Yes, because he contracted this virus in Singapore, not in China, the UK government has decided to extend its advice for travellers coming back into the UK. Before this, if you'd been in China and come into the UK and developed symptoms, you were advised to isolate yourself and call a helpline or call a doctor. Now they're saying for some Asian countries, including Singapore and Malaysia, mm. if you've come back and developed symptoms, you should isolate yourself. So that's an extension geographically of what they were telling visitors to the UK and travellers before. Well, on Tuesday, the UK government advised all British citizens to leave China. And today, the Chinese ambassador to the UK has responded, criticising that decision, saying it was disproportionate and sowed panic. We advise the British side to take the professional advice of WHO. Uh, and British uh, side also agree with us. Uh, they said they will follow. Uh, the words does not match uh, uh, with the deeds. Now, the World Health Organization's broad view is that it's not good to close borders. It argues that people will still travel, but they'll start lying about where they've come from, which makes the disease harder to manage. You will, though, hear experts, for instance, the one we're about to hear from in the UK, who are defending the British approach. Well, I think, quite frankly, it's a bit rich of the Chinese to turn around and say we're overreacting. This is the country that's now got 30,000 people, probably, that they have confirmed has this. There's probably a big clinical iceberg there where that 30,000 constitutes the tiny tip of that iceberg. And there might be as many as 100,000 people who are currently infected with it. And they've knocked up two new hospitals with 1,000 beds in each in about two weeks. I'd say that's a pretty forceful reaction to what they must perceive to be a pretty critical threat. Well, China is now committing extraordinary resources to try and contain this virus. Let me show you some of the most recent pictures to come into the newsroom. First of all, this is in Hubei province, a place called Yijiang. And as you can see, disinfectment is being sprayed all over the streets in an effort to control the virus. Of course, these pictures are from Hong Kong. What you can see here in the road is an extraordinarily long queue. Thousands of people queuing around the block to try and buy surgical masks to protect themselves from the virus. Back to Wuhan, the city itself, and you can see the kind of uh, a kit that medical professionals are having to wear in order to treat patients in some of these new purpose-built hospitals that have been constructed in under two weeks. And then we have these extraordinary scenes too. They're being called fever camps in stadiums, gymnasiums and conference centres, which are being kitted out with thousands of beds, again, to look after people who have contracted this virus. Well, among the new cases confirmed today is a newborn baby in the city where the virus began, Wuhan. And this is important. It's the first time an infant as young as this has contracted the disease. And it raises the possibility that the virus could be passed from mother to child in the womb. Although, as you'll hear in this clip, we should emphasise at the moment that's just a theory. A newborn baby is very vulnerable, as we all know, and so it's possible that the baby picked it up at, during the process of being born or uh, while mum was holding the little baby uh, and mum was yeah. symptomatic and coughing and sneezing. We do know that some viruses can cross the placenta. It's what we call vertical transmission, mother to child. But we don't definitively know that with this virus at the moment. Well, around the world, at least a dozen laboratories run by drug companies and universities are racing to develop a vaccine to try and protect people from this virus. And of course, the more they know about it, the better the chance they have of creating the vaccine. And the World Health Organization has been outlining today the main gaps in our knowledge. We don't know the source of the outbreak. We don't know what its natural reservoir is, and we don't properly understand its transmissibility or severity. To defeat this outbreak, we need answers 
to all those questions. And here's Hugh Pym again on the international effort to respond to the virus. The WHO at this stage has stopped short of declaring a global pandemic. What that tells us is clearly it's a matter of great concern in China, but it hasn't spread rapidly so far outside China. And in fact, the chief medical officer for England, Professor Chris Whitty at a briefing, was saying that as long as it stays like that, other countries, including the UK with the NHS, which is very well prepared, should be able to deal with a few dozen cases or something like that. If it turns into a pandemic and spreads widely into a number of healthcare systems, maybe without adequate measures to contain it, that's when it becomes a problem for everybody because of the extent of global travel, more people coming in, and that'll put more pressure on health systems. We're not at that stage yet. It's very important to say that. I'm glad you brought up this phrase because I'm hearing it a lot. Will it be declared a global pandemic? Won't it be declared? Now, presumably it's not just about how we describe what's happening. If it's declared as such, that then triggers certain responses. Is that how it works? Yes, it, it's moving from an epidemic in China to a pandemic, which has a technical definition for uh, medical authorities, which says it is spreading rapidly and in some senses out of control across a number of different countries. At that stage, the WHO would have to put out new guidelines, but each healthcare system would have to work itself with money through the WHO being targeted on those who most need it to try to isolate cases and care for them. But certainly that is a worry, but it is not at that level as things stand. It's very possible that if it stays roughly where it is and then the case numbers start falling, mm -hmm. then it'll go the other way.